Hey Peace Collective, this is Candence Green. I am coming at you on Friday. Um, this is July the 20th. We are on day 20 of our journey through the devotional. Can you believe it? Day 20. I'm here at Lake Montebello. This is my, my favorite spot between two trees and in front of me is the water. Here you go. See that? Gorgeous. So I, um, like I said, I'm at Lake Montebello and I really enjoy recording uh, out here. So that is why I'm here. Um, this is again Friday evening and we are just taking a moment to get ourselves realigned. You know, I sometimes can be so routine that when I'm thrown off of my routine, it kind of it ruins my peace, but I've decided to go with the flow. So uh, there's two days in a row where I've had to record in the evening and that's okay. The, um, the, the thing is, I'm doing the recordings and I'm here with you and you are watching this, uh, which means that the recording has been done, it's complete. So I'm not gonna be hard on myself, I'm actually just going with the flow and that is what brings me peace on this July the 20th. So let us do our peace break um, before we jump into today's um, session. So let's close our eyes. We're going to inhale peace and exhale fear. Inhale peace and exhale stress. Inhale peace. And exhale, worry. If you hear extra little sound, my daughter is here with me again um, tonight. <laughs> and she wanted to come back and join me. So she is here. She's working the camera and giving me a little extra uh, help as I'm out here tonight. So, day 20. Inhale, peace. 31 day journey through to uh, realign with God's peace. We're on page 56. Scripture says, the Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. Um, I have a lot of friends that are going through difficult times, um, mourning the loss of a loved one, uh, dealing with financial issues, um, loss of jobs, um, dealing with issues with their children, not knowing where meals are coming from. Difficult, difficult times. And these are the times when people either begin to lose their faith or really begin to press into uh, their faith and lean on God. It is not easy. I'll share a story with you. I, if you've been reading my blogs over the past couple of years through Cherish Flight, the blog um, I have shared many times about uh, a season in my marriage that was really really tough uh, this was 2007 uh, my son Amani my second son was born in March on March 18th and 10 days later my father-in-law passed away um, so 10 days after um, our son was born uh, my husband's father passed away. My husband lost his mortgage company. Um, and he ended up getting in a car accident. So our car was totaled. At the time, I was not working. I was a stay-at-home mom. I wasn't working. So we had zero income coming in, which meant that we could not get a new car. So we had to drive around in this totaled car and it was an Altima and it had one headlight hanging out of the front. On the passenger side in the front that we had to duct tape the headlight um, to keep it in. So you know what happened whenever it rained, it popped out. I was so embarrassed by the car um, that I couldn't really focus on the fact that we had transportation. We were not um, forced to, to use mass public transit um, but I couldn't get past the look of the car uh, that was a tough season my husband was mourning um, not only the loss of his father but the loss of his business 
uh, and the fact that he could not be the provider for a family that he wanted to be. I was suffering from postpartum depression and had a two-year-old and a newborn infant. Um, scared to death to be a parent to two children. It was probably one of the most difficult seasons of not only our marriage but of my life because financially we were really in dire straits. Um, we were in, in danger of losing our house and just everything you can imagine. Um, and still my husband was mourning the loss of his father. So what does all this have to do with what the topic is for today, which is um, looking back on difficult seasons of your life and seeing the hand of God working. Now, when I look back, I can see the hand of God working. I was going to a church at the time that had a magazine and I wanted to just contribute to the magazine. So I sent a message saying, hey, can I just freelance write? I don't want to be paid, just freelance write. I ended up being hired part-time that then transitioned to full-time uh, my husband um, at this time <laughs> could not find a job and had to work overnight at uh, one of these big uh, stores stocking shelves my husband was overqualified for every job that he applied for but but stock shelves at night so here's the lesson here he's probably the most uh, He's probably taught me the most about faith than anyone else. He never complained. He never griped. He got up every night and went to that job and came back the next morning exhausted from the work he had to do. So he slept during the day and then went back at night to this job. Never once did he complain. Never once did he gripe. Never once did he say, God, why? Why are you doing this? All he did was what he could do until he could do better for himself and for us. <sighs> to see the hand of God working now, um, people were praying for us. We would get surprise, you know, little, little checks in the mail. Um, people would send us meals. We have friends that can really cook. They would send us meals. Um, at the time, like I said, I had an infant. I was producing milk like, which was a blessing because I didn't have to go out and get formula, which you, everybody knows is so expensive. But God really showed up and what he really did for me was to show me what faith in action looks like. What does it look like to move and have faith? To have faith plus do the work. Faith plus works. My husband did that and he taught me how to move and operate with faith during a season when it just seemed like God had forgotten us. Our season of long suffering. But God hadn't forgotten about us and he was really fortifying us and creating a foundation of faith that we still rely upon, that we've built to rely upon even now. Um, so if you are going through a difficult season, please know A, it's a season. It will not last forever. God has not forgotten you. This is, this is the second point. He has not forgotten you. He is walking with you. He is beside you. He is carrying you through this difficult time. It will be hard, but God will build your faith. You must continue to believe, continue to pray, continue to go to him, continue to ask for help. If you need to seek therapy, seek therapy. Whatever it is that you need to do to continue to stay connected and aligned with God, do it. Don't turn your back on the Lord. He's still there with you. I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but somebody feels like God has abandoned them. And that is not true. He is right there. All you have to do is turn to the Lord in prayer. If you need to stop this video right now, then stop it and pray. Go to God in prayer. Pull on the hem of his garment so he can know. So you can know that God is there for you and with you. The Lord has not abandoned you. I don't know how many times I... Can, need to say it he has not abandoned you he is there for you and you will come through this season with a deeper understanding of God knowing him knowing the different facets of our Lord and understanding that 
you are never alone. Let this be your faith building season. I know it's not easy. Oh, it's not easy at all. But it is going to work out. A door will open. You will survive this time. You will have joy again. You will have hope again. You will. Just believe. Keep moving. Keep pressing. And keep your faith. I really hope that this message resonates with you. If you know someone who needs to hear it, please share it with them using the hashtag day 20 um, God has not abandoned you. You are not alone. Whatever you need to do to feel connected with the Lord, do it. Even if you don't want to do it, do it anyway. Because God is right there and the enemy wants to block us. With our feelings, he wants to block us from connecting with God. Move past that. Push past it. It's going to be hard, but push past it so you can get to God. Get to the hem of his garment. Just like the woman with the issue of blood, she pushed past everybody just to touch the hem of God's garment, the Lord's garment, and she was healed. God has not abandoned you. Push, press to get to him. I do hope that um, you have a wonderful evening. Spend some time in prayer, abiding with the Lord. If you have not purchased a copy of Inhale Peace, uh, please do head to my website, cherishflight.com.